Welcome on my behalf, and it is Windows Phone 8 uh, and C++. Uh, so, uh, so Drazen was responsible for uh, typing the stuff to the brochures. He made a small typo, uh, and I didn't notice it until he came and greeted me today. And uh, I figured I'd start with that. So it's not going to be Windows Phone 9, nothing about it, okay? And uh, uh, the app, if you use the app for the... Uh, for the Windows Phone for this event over there, it's correct. Uh, I was told, so that should be okay. That's where I checked, so I didn't realize. So uh, my name is Tommy Terasverta. I work for Tietori. It's an ICT training company in Finland, and uh, I was asked to talk a little bit on the C++ uh, topic on the Windows Phone 8 specifically. And uh, I guess if you're a third-party developer, you wouldn't be doing it in Windows Phone 7 anyway. So uh, we'll go in here. So uh, I've been working for the company for well, five and a half years now. Uh, my title specialist uh, or coach, I'm not sure which one it is, it's supposed to be changing. And uh, I can give you business cards with some other title as well. But basically it means my daily job is typically I deliver trainings, uh, Windows Phone, other development um, and such. I do some consulting, I do some development and uh, obviously coaching. I'm not quite sure what it, what's the difference between uh, delivering trainings and coaching, but uh, uh, apparently there is, so that's why my the title is changing. I've done mobile development since uh, uh, a few years back. Uh, started with Epoch 98, and uh, then moved on to basically most of what we have here in Finland. So that means uh, Epoch changed to Symbian, uh, Android, iOS, uh, Qt stuff, uh, and then Windows Mobile a little bit. Uh, Okay, have to admit, hated it, didn't really like. Windows Phone came out, and uh, that's actually really nice. So I've done that. C++ is probably my most favorite language. I do quite, other, quite a few others as well. I really like C Sharp, but still, I guess, going back, uh, that's where I started in 98 in mobile development for C++. So I really like the fact of being able to write some C++ for the Windows Phone. Although, one thing I want to give out to you is don't do it unless you really, really, really have to. Okay, so that's number one. And uh, we'll see the places where you really, really have to. So there are obvious uh, reasons and then some not so obvious uh, case in there. And uh, one single bullet about my company. So our largest ICT training company in, uh, in Finland. Uh, we are or will be part of a Sopranos uh, listed company. So they bought us last month. So that means uh, the uh, name, I have no idea if it's going to be uh, remaining or changing. And uh, we'll have that. We have offices in Finland and uh, Sweden, and uh, that's basically what we do. So currently in Tietori, we have about 80 people working in Finland and uh, then some uh, in Sweden as well. Okay. So that's briefly me and uh, my company. So. Let's go a little bit uh, more to the part where we have. So first of all, if you have Windows Phone app for the Windows Phone 8, you can use C++. Any and every app can use C++. Okay. Uh, if you're writing a game and you're using uh, Direct3D, you will be using C++. Okay, no question about it. So that's going to be C++ definitely. If for some reason you're targeting Windows Phone 8 and using XNA, you will not be using C++. So but XNA for the Windows Phone 7 and such, uh, yeah, you can still write games using that for the Windows Phone 8, but you will not be using C++ in those cases. That's uh, uh, clear. In the applications, and that's what we're mostly interested in here, at least I am, uh, so it means that you have a choice of writing a XAML-based app, and at that point, add some C++ to it. Now, you can not use XAML with C++ code behind. So that you can do in Windows 8 on desktop, but you can't do it in Windows Phone. So uh, it means it needs to be C Sharp or Visual Basic. So that's, those are the two languages right now. And the reason you might go in there is portability. Okay, So you have a great iOS game, or you're targeting both iOS and possibly Android, possibly something else, and Windows Phone, uh, or just an app where you do calculations, where you have algorithms. So at that point, all of those platforms, you can use C or C++ standard and 
write the same code, all platforms, desktops, and others. So that would be portability. Okay. Uh, performance. Well, of course, if we have managed C sharp code or you have native C, there are places where you can get the benefit boost. Uh, and at that point, of course, you would be going into the native part and uh, you'd be using C. So that's, uh, that's one part of reuse. You have a nice, good uh, library from 20 years ago, and you've been dragging it, dragging it along. That's written in C or C. Well, no need to port it, just reuse it. So those would be for the apps. And actually, fourth, that we have in there uh, Direct 3D, because you can combine Direct 3D with XAML. So at that point, the Direct uh, 3D part you would be doing in, uh, in C++. So that's, that's fairly simple. So like I said, you really shouldn't for the apps, unless you have 3D, or you do have a nice big library. So unless you really have a good reason you don't want to do and dwell into C++, not just because it's a nice language. C sharp is a nice language. And uh, there is a difference between native and managed, and there is an overhead, plus like we'll see in C++ of some demos. So at that point, when you move on to the C++ side, some of the stuff over there we are using, uh, if you've done Windows development uh, in the managed C++ world, similar things. So it means some reference uh, uh, counted objects uh, and other stuff. So that means there is an overhead. Plus, when you cross the boundary between managed and uh, native, there is an overhead, so that means you pay a penalty. So having something like I'll do in my demo, just to show you a little bit of code, uh, that would be horrible, that would be bad. That's actually worse for the performance just to go into C++ to do certain things. Okay. So if you do have a need, feel free to use C++. But like I said, one of the most key aspects I want to give in this speech is don't unless you really need to. So let's go native. Uh, we have managed, we have runtime, and then we have native. So it means if you go into using, for example, the speech API for the Windows Phone 8, uh, at that point, the speech API is implemented using, uh, using uh, the native part. So that means that we have an API. We have Windows Phone runtime components, uh, and over there we'll do the crossing, we'll go into the native part. So we still have lots of managed code. And the way you use the Windows Phone runtime components, or the way you use the native parts, which basically means that we'll have, for example, a custom-made API, we'll create a Windows Phone runtime API, and then we'll have our implement in, uh, implementation in the native part, so we'll do, do the crossing even if we do all of the things ourselves. And then in the managed part.net, we'll do the XAML app, uh, and in the XAML app, we'll just utilize the native components, but use it as a Windows Phone runtime component. Okay, that's fairly simple. Now, to be able to use the C++, you don't need a different uh, 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 tool. Uh, that would be very, very disappointing. I mean, I started using Visual C++ a few years back, so that means Visual C++ 6 was a uh, nice tool, and uh, it's been supported for a long, long time. And uh, it means that if we go in here, let's go in here. Uh, let's see what happens with this. Uh, I should have, yeah, let's do something else. I have a demo in here actually means that I'll go in here and uh, actually start the Visual Studio in another instance. Because there's some code I really don't want to see me uh, typing along and uh, doing all the typos and stuff. So uh, that starts somewhere in the back, that instance of it. But we could do still something like a new in here. Just go in here. Okay, not new file, but sorry about my laptop. Uh, okay, so Going for the Windows Phone, uh, obviously nowadays you typically choose the C Sharp as the development language, so it would be in other languages. And in the Visual C++ we have Windows Phone, and the Windows Phone we have a few of those uh, uh, templates available. So we could do a Direct 3D, I'll do that, so we'll see what happens in there uh, in a moment. Or you could do 
native only, so XAML app or native only, or runtime components, uh, which we'll also do uh, at some point, or we could go into using just a simple, simple uh, uh, runtime components in here. So do I have my Visual Studio? No, it's uh, apparently one in here. So let's go in here and uh, create our native app. So I'll just switch back to the previous project when I need that code. So uh, let's do it in this case, this way. And uh, just create an empty, empty uh, project. And here we go. We have a class we're including. So that means we're looking at C++ code. And uh, the projects we have in here, we have uh, C++, H, C++, H, uh, PHS, so we have pre-compiled header uh, stuff in here, C++, header file, uh, HLS, C, what's it, uh, high resolution, shaders, yeah, shaders, terrible, uh, sorry, cut, yeah, shaders. Uh, so that means we have a simple, simple uh, uh, app in here. Uh, I can get it running in the in the background. Uh, just yeah, let's build it. What we'll do, and uh, one thing that you notice from time to time is when you do C++ development compared to C sharp development, you'll do building, um, and uh, you'll actually have but uh, have to do manually things by starting in the background, and uh, eventually launching in here. But we have. C++, no C sharp, that's all we'll do. We have direct 3D app in here. And uh, going to C++ side, there's the C++ lovely, lovely code, as we'll see. Okay, so how many in here have experience in C++, but not in the Windows platform? Okay, how many have experience in C++ in Windows environment. Okay, about almost half and half, a little bit more in the Windows. But it means that for those people who have not done anything with Windows, uh, at least we have certain interesting syntax in here. And those people who've done stuff on the Windows say, okay, at this point, hey, he's doing managed stuff. Because that's actually what we had before in managed C++ for writing for uh, Microsoft. But what Microsoft did was that they changed the syntax slightly. So that's no longer managed, although it looks, uh, uh, based on the history, it looks like managed. That's basically a pointer, so uh, this hat thing. So it means that it's a pointer, and it's a pointer to a ref-counted object. So that means, yeah, in the background there is ref counting stuff in there, but you will use it just like a pointer, and don't really worry about uh, those ref counting things. Uh, so that would be just fine. So uh, for most parts, really, really simple. But what we'll see in here is that we do have event handling. We do it in dot, uh, Microsoft style. So that means that uh, if you're looking at good, old, plain, nice, simple C++ standard that you were looking for, uh, yeah, we can do it, but quite often, especially even though when, even also when we go into the app development and XAML part, we will have this interface part where we'll uh, access the uh, managed part, and then we'll have the native stuff. And the native stuff you're supposed to write just good, plain old C++. Not worry about those things uh, that we have in here in the Microsoft style. Okay. So we have uh, all kinds of stuff in here. So let's do one thing in here. We have the app manifest. And the app manifest, what we have is we have image path to phone direct 3D app one exe. That's actually what you're building. So you're not building a DLL, uh, building anything, it's just building a simple native exe in, in this case. And the result, what we have in here, Woo, that's the template. Got some direct 3D code and uh, don't really have to know much, much about it. But anyway, that's the first C++ app and uh, going games, direct 3D, uh, will use C++. And uh, there are plenty of tutorials, there are plenty of examples, there are plenty of information if you want to continue on this path. 
But like I said, for the most part, what we'll do is we'll concentrate on the XAML part and uh, building runtime components and utilizing the C++ code uh, from that side and on the CSR. Okay. Okay. So that's the first C++ app. Okay. And uh, switch to this part. Okay, so Windows 8, that's where I actually started writing C++ and C Sharp combined in the XAML. And for most parts, if you see an example written for Windows Phone, oh sorry, Windows 8 on the desktop, that's just fine. And probably if you go, not Googling, but Binging, of course, uh, since we're in uh, tech, uh, tech days, it means that you will go into looking at how to utilize C++ on the uh, Windows Phone or Windows 8, something like that. You'll find an example. The first example would be how to use C++ native component from JavaScript XAML app. Okay. So that means that some of the examples, yeah, definitely don't work. But for most parts, it's just fine for the Windows, uh, Windows 8 as well. And... Uh, this part in here. So if you've done Windows Phone development, uh, you may have run into this. You could actually utilize a C++ implemented COM component in Windows Phone 7 if you wrote it. Uh, good luck trying to get it passed uh, through the uh, marketplace, or it was called uh, uh, validation, but yeah, you could do it at that point. So it means that same way if you manage to get something running, if you manage to call some components, if you manage to write some code that runs just nice um, uh, on your phone, don't bet on it being able to actually uh, uh, be placed on the Windows Phone Store. So that means that you need to utilize certain things. The compiler is happy to uh, check for you, and it uh, doesn't allow you to compile things uh, if you write, uh, write the C++ in a, uh, in a bad way. But for some parts, you can do things and uh, I guess the previous uh, uh, presentation, which I skipped, was uh, using uh, Windows Phone uh, uh, Enterprise. In the Enterprise, so if you have company-specific line of business apps, well, you can do certain things that you can't if you are publishing them through the public uh, Windows, uh, Windows Phone uh, uh, market, uh, store. Still stuck with the marketplace, sorry about it. But anyway, uh, you, can, you could do those. So, games, yeah, we saw this and uh, uh, went in here. So uh, it means XNA, no C++ usage. Uh, XAML, yeah, we could do uh, this one. Or you could do a XAML-based app, just like before. So in that sense, uh, uh, no difference whatsoever. Okay. Okay, so let's go in here. Uh, using apps. So first of all, uh, can't, can't use the code behind. So it means what we need to do is we need to have a separate library. And the e easiest way, way to utilize it is that you create a Windows Phone runtime component. And then that runtime component will be used just like any other component uh, uh, in your approach. And in the C Sharp side, you really don't see much difference into using your own custom built runtime components compared to using the existing runtime components that we have in the SDK and we can use in, uh, in the platform. And the first thing you do need to realize is that not every single C++ class that we write can be used from the XAML part. So it needs to be a public sealed. And that's actually <coughs> what we saw in... Okay, no, you guys don't see it. Uh, I just love this. Okay, go in here. Close, 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 close. So in our header, header file, which I was hoping to go into, so we have also here a ref class that is sealed. So that's what we'll see all over the place uh, when we're writing the classes, is when you want to publish anything, you'll have a sealed class, and then you have a ref class. And the ref class, to be able to access it, uh, uh, pass basically uh, pointers to the, the other side. And a sealed class, 
uh, that's technical, basically meaning that you can't override those clauses in the uh, uh, C-sharp side, in the managed side, so Microsoft made a decision that it needs to be a sealed clause so you don't even accidentally try. So but every single clause that you're going to be using from XAML side needs to be sealed. And those who have not that much experience in, uh, uh, in the .NET, sealed basically would be the same as a final clause uh, that we have in the C++ side. So some a clause that we can not override. Fairly simple. Okay. So. Moving on, okay, types. That's one of the things that people typically stumble into the first time. So we have .NET types. We have runtime, Windows phone, uh, phone runtime types. We have C++ types. And in the C++ side, we have the standard types, then we have the Microsoft types, uh, and all over the place. So that means that that's gonna be a typically a big stumbling block initially. Uh, well, not necessarily a big stumbling block, uh, th but that's something that you will uh, definitely see. And uh, the Windows on runtime types are the only ones that we can pass across native managed boundary. And uh, that's basically one reason why we use the string and the hat in there. So but we're using runtime types. You can create your own runtime types. You can pass your own custom types in there as well, as long, long as you do it properly. And uh, we can use uh, value types, and we can use reference types. And the sealed ref classes, or then just the value structs, uh, all of those we can create in uh, C++. So but we'll do this. And uh, then we can use normal standard types in C++ code. But it means that while we stay in the C++ side, we can use whatever types we have in the standard, for example. So standard list, for example, uh, that's fine, that's great. That we can use. But we can not pass return from a function, a standard list. We need to convert that type into a uh, Windows Phone runtime, uh, runtime type. So it's not a biggie, you need to know. and. Uh, uh, going through different types of uh, of C++ types, that's okay, interesting. Uh, native types work well. Uh, strings, if you have the runtime uh, type, that would go fine. Uh, so we'll go in here. And uh, like I said, inheritance, you don't really want to go in there. So uh, being able to pass from the C++ side an object or then an object of type of the subclass of it. So that doesn't work. So we're not going to go into in inheritance. So it needs to be a specific type. And a couple of examples. So uh, yeah, uh, references, uh, that goes fine. Uh, passing handles, uh, using fine. And uh, we'll go for, go for the white uh, car uh, type uh, so as a, as a demo, so that's the part I don't want to type in front of you. So basically what we'll do is we'll pass a string from uh, uh, the XAML side and we'll change it into uh, a white car type and then just for, go for a car, car pointer and uh, work with that. So a uh, very simple example of uh, just what you need to do when uh, playing around with different types. Then again, moving stuff uh, from away. So uh, if we have a vector that we'd be, like to move uh, across the boundary, so the standard library move is a very good method. So that basically means that we're not going to be doing copies. So that's efficient in that sense. But we're returning an I vector uh, from our C++ side. And what we'll do is we'll basically just create a new vector. And with the standard move uh, function, basically get the existing that we have in the standard list. Uh, for example, get that data pass it into a uh, runtime uh, type, and then we can return it. So again, not difficult, but need to do it. And you start to get an idea of why I said that you don't want to do simple things in C++, because uh, that means that all the overhead of, for example, type conversions and all the other stuff, uh, yeah, the performance penalty is much greater than doing uh, actually quite complicated stuff in the C++ side, uh, sorry, C sharp side in the managed, uh, managed environment. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, just the details of uh, uh, collections and uh, other things we have, uh, have, have in here. Okay. So, converted WinRT types. So you do change it if 
you frequently cross the boundary, and it's costly. So that means in our C++ side, when you're writing the C++ side, so you choose between a win PRT type or you use a standard C++ side. So if you're crossing uh, at that point, I recommend that you do use uh, that uh, the Windows PRT type. But like I said, there is a performance penalty for the reason that those are reference counted objects. Uh, so that means that uh, uh, some per penalty for performance is for those types as well. Okay. Uh, containers collections, uh, yeah, you need to copy, uh, move, what we find. Uh, platform, so that means that not everything done in the Microsoft way is efficient. Certain things done in the standard C++ side are more efficient than the uh, than what we have in the Microsoft side. And uh, if you do use, again, same as uh, uh, simple, simple types, if you do cross them, uh, cross the boundary, so at that point actually converting is a bigger performance hit than the reference counting and other stuff uh, and the penalty hit for using not quite as efficient collection type uh, in the C++ side. Okay, so what C++ can we use? Anything that you have in the Visual Studio 2012, as far as C++ itself is concerned. And uh, there is C++ 11, so that means Lambda, the auto keyword, which I really, really like, uh, so you can use that as well. We have the new for loop for going through the collections and uh, all the other stuff. And uh, this particular, sorry about it. Yeah, not quite as prepared as I was hoping. Not connected, no, okay, not gonna be sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, that particular uh, link would be uh, linking to the document that lists what is supported in the Visual Studio uh, uh, as far as the C++ is concerned, what can be used, what others can, can't be used, so uh, that's simple. And uh, like I said, so Windows 8 as well uh, can use, including some Win32 APIs, and there's a link to the list of which Win32 APIs you can use. You can't use quite as many Win32 APIs as you can in the Windows 8 in the desktop, but still some of the Win32 APIs can, can be done. And the syntax, like said, yeah, some is, like we saw, is, the, for example, the hat and others. So it means that we do use the uh, uh, syntax style. And then, of course, the type, especially in the interface part, we're going into the Microsoft stuff. And uh, we can uh, use our own C++ types. We can go in here. And uh, one thing about asynchronous stuff that we can also use. So it means that if you have an asynchronous API or whatever it takes a long time, we can write it in C++, uh, just use the async action and others, and then, of course, in the C sharp side, use async uh, style of asynchronous programming. So that means that it's fairly simple to do this as well. But if you do have the library from 20 years ago, you don't probably uh, have that part. So what we'll do is write an interface uh, that would basically be utilizing your long running task. Uh, and at that point, you would be using it just like a normal uh, uh, with an uh, async, uh, action, uh, async handling in .NET 4.5 uh, and others as well. So uh, I was looking at the time and uh, thinking of uh, going back into the recent, recent, recent projects and a uh, simple calculator in here. Takes a little while, but eventually it goes in here. Calculator is also not always nice. Uh, so it means that uh, it does something very, very simple, but if you get done with a calculator, so by utilizing that uh, idea, it's fairly simple to do uh, other places. So I have here a calculator that at this point doesn't really do anything. Uh, yeah, let's build it. And that's a normal XAML based app. Uh, okay, great. Uh, I went, went ahead and modified. Uh, yeah, I'll show that a little bit later. By the way, it doesn't build yet, so I took away the nice stuff from here. 
uh, and of course it doesn't build uh, once you take away the nice stuff from here and uh, that was the C++ side. Uh, so what I've done in this project is I created this beautiful application UI uh, with a couple of text boxes uh, and then a button that performs the calculation and those who can read the code see that it will not uh, or figure out it doesn't do anything but what we could do is uh, do calculate so it doesn't do anything. So what we'll do is we'll actually make that button that calls that particular uh, uh, method in there to actually use a Windows Phone runtime component uh, that I've done in here, uh, these four for most parts. So what I did is uh, create my UI and then add it to my solution, a new Windows Phone runtime component from the C++ templates. And from the C++ templates, what I've done is uh, I added in here uh, just calculate in and calculate string, nothing else except that uh, showing what the basic types, so how very, very easy it is to actually use. And then the string just to do a little bit of type conversion in here uh, as an example of uh, what we can do uh, in the C++ side. And the calculator project it only has the C++ file, the header file, uh, pre-compiled headers, and that's pretty much it. And implement it as a runtime component in C++. And then what I have also done is that in my calculator in here, I have a reference added to this one. So from the solution, already have the calculator added. So it means that after adding the reference, I can actually utilize it. Okay. And one reason why I'm saying is uh, I do deliver training, so that means I see lots of people trying to do stuff, and that's one of the uh, first things that they'll stumble into is forget the reference and then wonder how come nothing works. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And um, calculating in here, so uh, let's write my beautiful, beautiful code, just returning was plus uh, uh, n2 in here. So beautiful C++ write. So my, my code in here. And now let's use this. So uh, I'm using it from here. And uh, I'll have my native calculator. Let's use the bar. Uh, my calc is uh, new native calculator. OK, great. Let's just create me a native calculator. And to be able to do this, I'm using the calculator namespace uh, that is used in my uh, uh, in my uh, runtime component, and from here, surprise, surprise, uh, what I can do is uh, just get the result uh, from the calculator calculator. Okay, it's too much C++. Sorry about it. Uh, from the calc. Okay, great. Now you understand why I didn't do anything. I uh, actually have some code uh, with me at times. So from the calc, uh, so I'll calculate int, and in here, what I'll do is just get my uh, text uh, from here and uh, convert to integers. So let's parse from my uh, text box one. Still using the old style stuff in here, and uh, from the text box two, text. And uh, actually, yeah, do that all the time. Trying to talk, think, and write at the same time seems to be a tricky thing for me, at least. Okay. Anyway, managed to get it, and then for my uh, text block, yeah, set the text to be result to string. Very very simple code. So what I'm doing in here is that I'm actually using my C++ implemented runtime component. That's all there is to it. And uh, if you're using with the native types, that's pretty much all there is to it. So that means that we don't have to worry about types. We don't have, uh, we're using native simple types. And at this point, uh, going into calculating, and it seems to be 11. OK, just fine. So that means that, yeah, in this time, I could have done that from scratch, but uh, I had the other part I don't want to do from scratch. Uh, so uh, 
uh, we could have done a simple combination of C sharp and C++ in a few minutes uh, if you don't have to worry about type stuff. Okay. I actually saw some people smiling. Seems to be impressive. So it is this simple. Okay. Uh, debugging. There's a slide about debugging a little bit later, but I'll skip to that in this case. Okay. So in my C sharp code, yeah, sure. Let's uh, put a breakpoint in here. And uh, let's put a breakpoint into my C++ code. Okay. And start debugging F5. Okay. So let's calculate 0 plus 0. Stops. Okay. So let's uh, step over F10. Let's step over. And at this point, we are going into the C++ side. It didn't stop. And the reason it didn't stop is you can not debug both managed and native code at the same time. You have to choose what we want to do. And since I did not make the change, it's the default, and the default is managed code. So but let's uh, continue. And uh, yeah, definitely got zero. Go back, stop the debugging session uh, in here. And now I'm going to go and actually stop in my uh, project code. So uh, the properties for the project, and in the debug, there's debugger type. And for the UI task, I'll go native only. And now that I'm native only, now it doesn't stop in my C sharp code, but it stops in C++ code. And if there's somebody who didn't guess that already, so I would, have, uh, would be very surprised in here. So but again, just to make my point clear, uh, start the debugging session. Again, calculate. Let's do something like an 8 uh, plus 4. Calculate it. And now I stop, not in the CSR, but in C++. OK. Yeah, surprise, surprise. And uh, that would be 8 uh, and so forth. So a normal, simple debugging, just like you've done uh, in Visual Studio all over the uh, uh, all over the place uh, in the same way. And uh, continue. Okay. And uh, go back. And then. Oh, by the way. Now going into deep. Okay. Back. Uh, not notes. Simple calculator. Calculate in here. Uh, yeah, continue. Notice that we don't have in here those little scribbles. And uh, if you've done any debugging, looking at what they are, they're actually the C sharp side, SAML side, uh, checking if the debugger is attached. And if the debugger is attached at that point, enables uh, the output for the frame rate and uh, about how many UI visuals we have and so forth, so the numbers we have in here. And because we don't have the debugger attached for the C sharp side, we don't see the scribbles in debugging the native code. But still, it's uh, uh, debugging just like uh, uh, anything else. Okay. So, Stop the debugging session. Okay. So, pretty simple. Okay. Now, at this point, let's go looking into types. So, what we get here is reference types, we get strings. And getting strings in here, what I'm doing is in here is something horrible. I mean, there's a simple way to do it. I just wanted to show you to use the good old ASCII to int at all uh, 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 function and passing a character pointer to that, so uh, nothing else. So that's why it is in this way. So what we're doing in here is that <coughs> we have the string reference, so we'll actually get the, the data from there. And uh, uh, if you're happy with uh, const uh, white char uh, pointer, yeah, that's fine. But like I said, we can also use the auto keyboard. So just like in CSR, if you have the var, uh, the CSR 11 uh, addition, so auto would work just fine. So uh, we could do this. And in some cases, it's pretty nice, uh, especially when you have all the types uh, over in here. So use the auto keyboard. So auto keyboard, uh, revamped auto keyboard in C11 standard, basically same as CSR var. So it means we're still 
strongly typed. It's just that the compiler takes care of typing instead of us having to type all uh, uh, the code in there. And if you start thinking of collections and uh, generics and uh, all the other stuff in here, okay, yeah, auto keyboard is really, really nice. And then uh, we'll just get the length for, uh, for it. And uh, since the length is a uh, number of, of uh, actual characters we have, and we're creating a buffer for us, so add one for the uh, end of uh, character uh, mark. White char to multi-byte, or multi-byte white char. So if you've done Windows development, you may have uh, stumbled into it before. So it's the good old-fashioned way of uh, tra converting between the white, uh, so basically uh, Unicode and uh, 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 ASCII characters in this case. And uh, it's from the PPL tasks uh, header file, which is uh, uh, the Microsoft header uh, that you can utilize in here. And uh, now that we have done the conversion, now we have the actual data in our C string. And, uh, uh, C, uh, C string. and then doing the same thing, and then we can go into task key to int and uh, convert both of those ints and uh, just simply return our, uh, return the result. I was thinking of uh, doing the conversion the other way around, but then again, uh, that's just, at least to me, it's boring because we can return uh, a string uh, hat uh, from here, just like we can pass as an argument, so uh, just writing to a couple lines of code of converting an integer to a string. So uh, I didn't feel like the uh, worth of it, so I figured this would be uh, would give you uh, the benefits of uh, what you sometimes need to do with the type conversions. Okay, let's use it. And again, should be very simple. And uh, I'm actually expecting that most people could do this uh, at this point without me having to do anything in here. So about the result. Instead of uh, using the cal calculate int, so cal result is assigned from the calc, uh, calculate string. And in here, not having to parse stuff, so just get from the text box one text. And the text box two text. Save it. Run it. Not even debug. Which we could do, as we saw previously. It went to will pop up and see if we can calculate 5 plus 6, 11. Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, it is that simple. Combining XAML with Windows Phone runtime components. And now from the runtime components, uh, uh, I think I'll stick with the code for a little while instead of going through the slides. It's, uh, but for some people, it's a little bit more interesting. So over in here, we have the ref seal class. We can write normal, simple C++ types uh, in here. So, uh, if we just go uh, at this point and uh, start writing a class, uh, my class is always an excellent name. Type in here, yeah, I could use it. But I could only use it from within my C++. And now in my code, I could actually create that uh, type, uh, create an object, uh, allocate it, work with it, and so forth, but it could not be used from the managed side. And that's typically what you would be doing, is that you would have your standard C++ code. You would uh, use those. You could write a library, if you have a library, so uh, just using a DLL or then uh, a, a static library, or just combine stuff in, uh, uh, in here, and <coughs> work with the standard library. And then we need to, need to access it from the C sharp side uh, you would have an interface, and in the interface side, you would go into converting into Windows Phone RT types, and uh, you would have the asynchronous API, and you would have all, all that stuff. But for the actual code, actual algorithms, actual uh, uh, handling, standard, good old-fashioned C++ code. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Pretty simple.
looking at the time, I have uh, about 10 minutes, uh, so uh, we'll, we'll finish up for, for this part. So, uh, so we have the standard C++ API WinPRT, like I said, internal standard goes in here. Overhead, like mentioned so many times, need to go in there. Cross-boundary need to be WinRT uh, RT types, so uh, that needs to be implemented in here. And uh, using it, well, I just showed you. So uh, that means that all we need to do is reference to the DLL. Uh, and uh, once we reference the DLL, use it just like any normal component. I mean, that's what quite a few people have been doing with Windows Phone, the plain old SDK classes. Like, like I said, speech uh, recognition API. So that's WinPRT component. So it means that uh, using that, you'll see the examples, it's normal C sharp code. So very, very simple. And uh, yeah, it is. Uh, again, the types, the types, types, interface classes, specific rules, uh, uh, public seal ref classes, uh, need to be public classes. And then for the types, what often people really are interested, so going for the type system. So that's a good read if you are going to be writing C++. So getting an overview, browse through it, of, of the types and nice good examples. And uh, I would actually show it if I had my network connection on, which I forgot. Uh, so that's a nice, nice good uh, uh, example. Debugging, like I said, uh, yeah, business usual, like showed, either managed or native. So very, very simple. Uh, and uh, we're in the recap. So whatever, we can use that. And now, Drazen who booked me, I'm not sure if he'd be so happy about me talking about uh, being able to write uh, uh, iOS apps and the Androids and uh, Android apps and all the other apps and uh, just use the good stuff uh, in the Windows Phone as well. So cross-platform applications work nicely. So you don't have to go into, uh, okay, some people say horrible, some people say great HTML5 apps that we could uh, have a cross-platform app, but uh, actually use native C++ uh, for, uh, for all those. And uh, performance, and now hopefully you understand a little bit better what I meant about, uh, you really need to check if you get, get the performance from the C++ side. If you do the type uh, things poorly, okay, performance gone, and uh, but even worse than it was before, so really careful with it. Reuse, uh, yeah, don't need to port to C++ SARP or Visual Basic, just use the existing C++. If it's a standard C++, write a DLL, write an interface to that standard C++, uh, uh, and uh, you don't necessarily have to change one single line of code. If you do use COM components, okay, that's not standard C++, by the way. So it means that if you're utilizing COM components, uh, uh, then you might have to change the COM components into uh, uh, runtime components as well. And uh, there was on one slide, I guess, which I forgot to mention. So there are basically like two APIs of COM components that uh, uh, can use. So that would be uh, the speech and uh, then that's the camera of uh, API. So for most parts, you can't really use uh, COM components from uh, Windows Phone, although you can in Windows Desktop, but others. And then, of course, uh, Direct3D. That's, uh, that's a simple, simple case. Okay. So that was the presentation. And uh, left five minutes for Q&A. And there's one. sampling or instrumentation for both native and managed part. Can you per, uh, manage, uh, uh, like, uh, measure performance for both sides at the same time? Okay, so can you manage performance uh, both sides? Uh, so it means uh, what kind of tools do we have for, uh, uh, profiler. yeah, profiler. Uh, well, for the managed side, you have the visual profiler. That's part of the package with the SDK. So that's in there, but uh, I'm ashamed. I don't know if it works for C++. But uh, yeah, that comes with the package managed, but uh, I don't know, C++, yeah, sorry. There's a question. 
Windows Phone and Windows Phone 8. Uh, sorry, Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8 right. are the types other the same. Okay, uh, Windows Phone and Windows 8 RT types, are they the same? Uh, for most parts, uh, on source level, yes. Uh, but what you need to do is you need to uh, build them if you have a want, uh, build them different, uh, separately if you want to uh, uh, target both, both platforms. And uh, for most parts means that uh, on the phone you have some APIs that you don't have on the desktop. Uh, so that's for, for most parts. Awfully quiet audience, but, uh, but that's okay. We can stop right here. Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, there's, like I said, there's the feedback, and uh, hope you guys have a great end of the tech days. <laughs>